Just a little taste, a little taste of Alan. Just a little, mm, a little people, people, people love their little taste of Alan. Yeah. <sighs> I knew you were gonna go there. I knew it. I've been working with you for years now. You're, I know you're Asian you're... fans. They want, they want to taste more of you. And I think you should allow them to taste. What is it, 1.47 million subscribers, Mr. Ballinger? Uh, something like that. Uh, I have some <laughs> plaque that says I, I passed a million and then after that I stopped counting. It was really exciting getting to a million and now I've like, I'm like, okay, I can't get wrapped up in this too much. Because you, you can get really wrapped up in the numbers sure. and like, oh, I then it, I, I feel like that's where a lot of the YouTube burnout uh, that's happened recently is, is from is it's just getting caught up in the algorithm and the numbers and like chasing views, chasing, you know, uh, something that isn't fun. If it's not fun, it's, it, mm. it's hard for it to be fulfilling. Uh, a lot of YouTubers recently, I think in the last like two, three years have posted these videos of just like, I'm burnt out, can't keep yeah. up with this. I can't do this anymore. I need to focus on my mental health, all that kind of stuff. And I think there are a lot of things that can contribute to that. But I think one of the things that that happens is is there is a rush that happens when like a, a video goes viral or mm, or you're sure. successful in in the numbers. And then if you start chasing that too much, then you lose the heart of what it is that you're doing. And you become almost a slave to the algorithm as opposed to like learning how to use the, the YouTube like suggested algorithm to your advantage. Mm. And, it, and it just, uh, it can really burn you out. So I've, I've personally kind of taken a step back from that and I'm, I'm producing stuff that like, I'm just passionate about. I have fun making and, um, and it takes some of the stress off of like, I've got to put this kind of content out this many times a week and, yeah. and all of that. I actually didn't even know that YouTube burnout was becoming a thing, but I feel like it, it totally touches on my own personal frustration sometimes with social media. And Justin, I know I talked to you about mm. this quite a bit. Justin's so funny. He always has to like crack a whip to get me to do my, my social media content. Cause I'm so bad at it. Alan but, doesn't fucking do anything. <laughs> Alan, you need like a cardboard cutout of me in your apartment and then you'll be more helpful again. And you'll just always yes. post for your, for. <laughs> just to remind me of how yeah. helpful I can be. Yeah, Chris, just, if you could just, if you, you as the social media superstar, if you could just remind Alan that this is a thing that he needs to do consistently. Then, to then some get, level. I might get Alan burnout then. If I'm calling, uh, if I have to call uh, Alan I, every, every uh, five minutes to remind him to post. Oh, well then, then we can bond over Alan burnout. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, imagine how hard it is to be Alan with Alan burnout. Okay. It's tough. Uh, no. Okay. So I think it's the feeling of needing to constantly post to keep things um, updated and, and content being produced so rapidly these days and con that people are used to having constant updates and I get so overwhelmed by it. I just, I just don't want to do it. We got to keep it fun. Find a way to make it, make it your own, make it fun. I think, I think that's the main thing. The main advice I would give anybody is, is that it's, it's gotta be you and it's gotta be something that you you're enjoying. Um, because otherwise it just becomes, people can, I think people can see through when you're forcing it. If you're, if you're constantly like, I don't want to do this. Okay. I'll try and come up with something clever. Ah, oh, it's not good enough, but I'll post it anyway. It just feels like, uh, I feel like people kind of see through that. And so you got to find the fun in it. And if you find the fun mm. in it, then even if, if it doesn't get any likes, at least you had some fun making the content. Or, or maybe you were just getting better at doing your editing or better right. at creating a little comedy sketch or whatever. Yeah, that's another thing is yeah. like when I first started YouTube, uh, for me personally, uh, I was used to a certain level of like editing style and, and, but the fast pace of YouTube helped me kind of relax and experiment instead of it has to be perfect by the time it gets out there. It was more important to post and it was more important to, yeah. and, uh... and when you post more frequently, there's two things that can happen. One, you can burn out. Or two, if you're having fun with it and and trying to find new ways of playing with it, then your your skills get better. You 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 gain new skills that you didn't have before, 
and uh, you find different ways of telling your story. He makes social media sound like so much fun. But then Alan, sometimes- I, I can't wait to see what you do from here on out. I'm oh, excited about the I future. am going to be posting about my new cleanse teas that I'm drinking as do well it. as as well as a new foam roller that just gave me a little bit of money to promote on my Instagram account. Actually, Justin, he made the same point that you've made to me before, which is that maybe I care. Like I'm too precious with the content that I'm putting up. And I care so much about how it goes in this way or that way or how it might be read by this person or that person. Yeah. But then I just get overwhelmed. I'm like, I don't even want to post it because I feel so concerned about how that post is going to be. You're overthinking it. Yeah, maybe. You made a really good point earlier, Alan, that, that, you, uh, that there's so much content constantly being produced. Like it's, it's going to happen and be over so mm. fast that it doesn't need to be perfect every single time. It's not some masterpiece that someone's going to like hang on their wall or, you know, it's, it's something that exists for them in that moment. They might share it with somebody, but it's not a, it's not a reflection of who you are completely as a person. It's just a little, just a little taste, a little taste of Alan. Just a little, mm, a little people, people love quoi. their little taste of Alan. Yeah. <sighs> I knew you were going to go there. I do it. I've been working with you for years now. You're, you're you... Asian fans. They want, they want to taste more of you. And I think you should allow them to taste.